what is SFR? Single family rental, not single family residential, single family rental. Uh, it's a new term that's been co uh, coined in the professional Wall Street oriented industry. And that's what the asset class is now called. So you've got five food groups in commercial real estate. You've got office, you've got retail shopping centers, you've got hospitality, hotels, you've got industrial, which is warehouses and factories, and then you've got multifamily. Now you've got SFR as well. And it's a monster of an asset class. So what it is, is single family homes that are tenanted. Okay, second nature to you, kind of foreign to a lot of people in the real estate business. Tenants and management in place is what SFR is. It produces a modest, by some people's standards, but a very dependable return on investment of between eight and 10%. And we're gonna dig into ROI and where these numbers come from, but dependable. And when I say modest, I'm talking about, this is not any kind of a heavy duty, get rich quick flipper thing, okay? SFR is about the accumulation of a portfolio, which could be one house. It could wind up being, as some clients are showing, 80,000 houses, but a lot of the more uh, consumer oriented, smaller investors, we have a lot of people that own six, eight, 10, 15, right? Their lives are very different 25 years from now when they've got 15 houses paid off. Very, very different. And so the power of what we're all doing together for these customers, customers of yours that have one or two that get caught up in this and get excited about it uh, and get that, that find your confidence and enthusiasm for it contagious and they learn how to do this the right way. Uh, we can really change a lot of lives. If you own one rental property and you get sucked into this whole idea and then, you know, 25 years from now you own 15 and they're paid off, your life is different. Like we will have changed your life in that situation. And by the way, I'm talking to you too, right? Like if you're in the real estate investment business, one of the things that you can think about as you start to build your capacity to sell investment property, and I'm going to suggest to you constantly that maybe you take half of the commissions you generate from investment sales, if you're able to do that, or all the commissions you generate from investment sales, or 20%, put it in a side account and let that become the fuel to build your own investment portfolio. Let this change your life too, as it changes the lives of the customers that you're working with. So SFR is a nice, tidy, rentable, occupiable house, in a decent place where people want to rent, want to live, want to raise their kids, want to walk their dog, and it generates an eight to ten percent return on investment, like clockwork. All right, and like this is a good week to be talking about this because the stock market's been doing this. Actually, you, I'm, I'm sitting there making all these moves and you can't even see me. The stock market is going up and down and going crazy, and um, the housing market is ignoring all this nonsense. It's actually a good point. Stock market this week and last week went up. But went down 800 points, up 300, back down 500. One of the days that it plummeted, like I think it was like 800 points. Um, the reason that they gave in the financial press was that two of the president's key advisors went on cable news and contradicted each other. So two people that work for the government went on gotcha news channels, said something that contradicted, and the market plummeted 800 points. You know what housing did? Totally ignored it. So dependable, predictable, 8 to 10% ROI annually is what SFR does. Here's what SFR isn't. It's not flipping junkers. It's not distressed property. It's not 20% ROI, get rich quick. It's not hot deals, hot deals, hot deals. All right, there's an element of this industry. Like Here's the numbers. 80% of all the investment properties purchased every year are being purchased by people who intend to hold them as rentals. 99% of the noise in real estate investing is about deals, 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 get rich quick, come to my seminar, buy my coaching program. Um, <clears throat> I mean, literally, there are coaching programs happening this weekend where they teach you, or they, 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 they give you a free seminar, they tell you in the seminar, if you give them $20,000, they will teach you how to buy property with no money down. Because ironically, you won't have any money left once you pay them to tell you the big secret. And they literally say, I'm not even kidding here, they literally say, you give us 20 grand, we're gonna show you how to make that back up on your first deal. And my advice is, turn around and walk out, use the 20 grand as a down payment. You don't need to learn how to make 
acquisitions with no money down when you have money to put down. That's the gross nonsense that's out there dominating the messaging on this thing. And we're staying a million miles away from it. So literally just yesterday, somebody who saw our press release emailed me and said, where are the deals on your website? And I said, we don't have deals on the website. You buy properties at market value. You rent them out at market rent. You generate 8, 9, 10% ROI. You hold on to it 20 years and you build wealth. If you want to go find a stressed property, you're taking undue risk. We don't recommend that. Uh, any more than we'd recommend buying stocks because you want to buy the ones that are going to shoot up and shoot down. You want to buy the stock that's 50 cents because it might go to four bucks. That's not what you do if you're being a responsible long-term investor. And we're all about advising people on responsible long-term investing. So SFR is not about hot deals. And when you run across investors that that's all they want, go find the ones that aren't about that because they are completely uncontested out there. They're, they're out there in the marketplace. They're not loyal to any other real estate people, and they're there for the taking. All right, so put some context around this here. According to the National Association of Realtors, you're looking at a chart here that goes back to 2003, okay, all the way to 2016. I don't have the 2017 numbers yet. I probably could get those, but in fact, I will for the next one, but they're the same, right? More than 20% of all uh, residential home sales every year are purchases by investors. All right, so it was like a 21% in 2003, it went as high as 28, came down in the housing crisis to about 17, popped back up again 2011, and then has been basically leveling off at about 20%. Put some numbers around that. That's over 1 million sales a year. It's more like 1.2 on average. Interesting point, by the way, here's the housing boom. Investors were frothy. Here's the housing bust. Here's when they should have been frothy. <laughs> Right. Everyone says when the market's freaking out, that's when you buy. But yet people don't do it. Wall Street got involved right around here, 2011. And the market, this is when the market overall found the bottom. The housing market was healed. The housing crisis was solved by investors who had confidence, who saw this opportunity and jumped on it. And you could see it pop back up again to a million two and change. It's been hanging up of over a million transactions a year. OK, so a million transactions a year. That means, and it's really like more like a million two. So that means in January, there's going to be 100,000 houses purchased in America for investment. February, another 100,000. March, another, another 100,000. Our goal is real simple. Take a big bite out of this. All right, go after those customers, show them there's a place that actually is dedicated to them, and then take that business away. Uh, I suggest that it's going to be like taking candy from a baby. Okay, and I'll show you why in a minute. <clears throat> another piece of context. This is the total um, number of U.S. households that uh, own versus rent. All right. And the point of this one is that you can see in 2006, the gray lines are recessions, that during the recessions, home ownership either declines or flattens out. So home, home ownership declined a little bit, flattened out, and rentership cranked up. But the point I'm making is that rentership has been a big part of the housing economy going back to 1960s. There are people who will say, well, the housing crisis gave us this whole rentership thing. And then now that the market's recovered, renting is going to go away. Well, that's ignorant. All right. It's been up at 20 million plus as population's grown. So has rentership. It's gotten steeper. It might level off. I don't care about that. What I know is that it's a big chunk of the population. More context. This is the number of households. So there are 16 million or 17, depending on who's measuring it, called 16. 16 million single family homes that are owned by investors and occupied by renters in America. 16 million. These are not vacant houses. These are not flips. These are people living in rental homes. There's another 7 million two to four family. And there's 17 million multifamily units. So there are people that would be shocked to find out that there are almost as many single family homes in America that are rentals as there are apartments in America that are rentals. And if you add two to four family on top, it goes to 22 million, 23 million, which means our product, one to four family homes, is a bigger asset class than multifamily. It also happens to be more expensive per unit. So if you do it in dollar volume, it's a $3.1 trillion asset class, just the single family. Multifamily is about the same. So it's huge. OK, that's the point is that it's massive. And one more bit of context. I found this fun. So 13 percent 
of all the families that live in America live in single family homes that they rent. So think about that. Is this a niche, a little niche market, a little fringe market? All the stats that I've been showing you originated from the National Association of Realtors. All right, so the industry that sells homes knows all of this. They just don't act on it, right? Their slogan is home ownership matters. So they're focused on the home ownership side. As far as they're concerned, a renter is just a homeowner in the future, right? And they kind of look down on them to our benefit. 13% of all U.S. families. Is that a market niche? Well, I went looking for a way to kind of illustrate that. Check this out. That's the number of households that drive SUVs. <clears throat> Have you noticed any SUVs in the parking lot lately? <laughs> right? It's just gigantic, folks. Right? And so uh, I'm going to skip this. Actually, no, I'm not. I go overboard on the context because it's like there are people who doubt this sometimes. And so I just absolutely drown them in statistics from every different source so that it's undeniable. This shows, this measurement shows 17.6, this number down here at the bottom, 17.6 million total units there's a couple of second homes that snuck into this report so but it shows you the scale first column portfolio size 8.6 million investors that own one single family rental 2.2 million investors that own between two and five so that represents 5.7 million properties 182,000 investors that own between six and ten and on and on and on and so our goal is to activate this entire small to mid-sized investor class. So let's just say that I've established now that it's a big monster asset class. All right, so I just went to Google because as we know in 2019, if it exists, you find it on Google. So I just searched the term real estate. So let's say I'm a real estate investor. And I'm looking for help. So what I found is a handful of very local real estate companies here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And then I've got realtor.com, realestate.com, Zillow, Trulia. So the tech platforms show up. What do they have? They have millions of properties for sale and a whole bunch of real estate agents right behind those properties that want to sell them to you. And as I keep going, I'm going to find some real estate brands. So oh, where are the real estate brands? Usually you'll see Caldwell Banker, Century 21, Remax, there we go, Century 21, Keller Williams. You'll see them here, right? But now I'm realizing, that, hey, that's not really what I want. Okay, because these are all talking about my home, you know, like find your next home. I already have a home. What I'm looking for is real estate investment. Let's find out who's going to help me with that. Fundrise. All right, so that's a uh, that's a crowdfunding platform. Club Kawa. Don't know what that is. Quantum Leap Video Program. Investopedia. Fundrise again. Nine ways to invest without buying property. Great. How to invest in real estate, bigger pockets. Where's Zillow? Where's Trulia? Where's Realtor.com? Where's Keller Williams? Where's Century 21? They're not here. So nobody that shows property shows up, and nobody that sells property shows up. There's Club Kawa again. Who the hell's Club Kawa? Crowdfunding. Okay. So you can buy real estate without actually owning it. No thanks. What's my point? My point is, is that we have got this massive market that is also simultaneously uncontested. A million properties a year being purchased by people. This is NAR statistics. So these are people that are buying properties that are most likely using a realtor. Is that realtor adding value? Does that realtor care? Do those real estate companies put any energy or, or, or effort into servicing investor, investment? Candy from a baby, guys because nobody's ever placed them at the center of the universe until now. We're the first company to say, hey, <clears throat> here's a website, not dedicated to home ownership, but dedicated to investment. And here's a conference room with a real estate professional who's licensed and insured, who's not dedicated to home ownership, dedicated to rentership. 